If I asked you to make a guess as to who first discovered L'Hospital's rule, you're probably going to guess L'Hospital, whose full name was... Uh, maybe I'll just let you try that one. It's true that L'Hospital was the first person to publish the rule, which he did in 1696, in what is now considered the first ever differential calculus textbook. But L'Hospital was actually tutored very closely by Johann Bernoulli, even acknowledging Bernoulli's influence a little in his book. After L'Hospital died, however, Bernoulli came forward with the claim that L'Hospital had paid him off in order to use his discoveries in mathematics, including the rule that we now call L'Hospital's rule. So basically, if history had played out differently, we might be here today talking about Bernoulli's rule instead of L'Hospital's rule. Whatever we call it, this rule gives us a really handy tool for calculating limits involving indeterminate forms, like zero over zero or infinity over infinity. It basically says that if you're taking the limit as x goes to a, so x is getting really close to a, of f of x divided by g of x, so you've got two functions in a fraction, one in the numerator, one in the denominator, and you take the limit of the quotient of those functions as x gets close to a, then of course you're going to be plugging a in for x, so you'll end up with f of a over g of a. Well, L'Hospital's rule says that if you end up in that situation, and you get 0 over 0, or positive or negative infinity over positive or negative infinity, then what you end up with is an indeterminate form at that point x equals a. In other words, we're starting with the premise that you can't just use substitution to evaluate the limit, because when you plug x equals a into the function f of x over g of x, you get f of a over g of a and you end up with an indeterminate form, like this 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Obviously, when you use substitution to evaluate a limit, you're hoping for a real number answer, so getting an indeterminate form is a real bummer. But that's where L'Hospital's rule comes in. It lets you sidestep this whole substitution process, and instead of trying to take the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x, instead, we're going to take the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. In other words, the derivatives of the original numerator and denominator. So L'Hospital's rule basically gives us an easy, convenient way to rewrite our function using the function's derivatives so that we can still evaluate the limit. And the really cool thing about L'Hospital's rule is that even if we apply it once and replace f of x and g of x with their derivatives, if we then evaluate the limit as x goes to a and we still get an indeterminate form, we still get 0 over 0, or we still get infinity over infinity, all we have to do is apply L'Hospital's rule again. So we would replace f prime of x and g prime of x with their derivatives, in other words, the second derivative of f and the second derivative of g. We can then try to evaluate the limit again, plugging x equals a into f double prime of x and g double prime of x to see if we get a real number answer. But if we again get an indeterminate form, we can just continue applying L'Hospital's rule over and over and over, evaluating at the limit each time to see if we can get a real number answer. Now let's talk about an example where L'Hospital's rule really helps us out. So let's say that we have the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Okay, so we want to find the limit as x gets close to 0. What do we do? We try substitution first. When we try substitution, we end up with sine of 0 over 0. And when we evaluate that, we know that sine of 0 is equal to 0, so, through substitution, our result is 0 over 0. That doesn't help us at all when it comes to finding the value of the limit. That's just an indeterminate form. So, what do we do? Well, we can try L'Hospital's rule. Instead of working with the original function sine of x over x, instead, we'll take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. So, the numerator is sine of x, and the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. We also have the denominator as x, and the derivative of x is 1. So when we apply L'Hospital's rule, instead of taking the limit as x goes to 0 of the original function sine of x over x, instead, we take the limit as x goes to 0 of their derivatives cosine of x over 1. And now that we've applied L'Hospital's rule one time, we again want to go back to substitution to see if we can get a real number answer. So we plug in the value x equals 0 because we're trying to approach the value of 0, and we get cosine of 0 over 1. Well, cosine of 0 we know is 1, 
So then our fraction simplifies to 1 over 1. And now we can say that we've solved the limit and the value of the limit is 1. So the limit as x goes to 0 of the original function sine of x over x is 1. We just found it using L'Hospital's rule. Now that we've seen what L'Hospital's rule does, we need to point out some things that we have to be careful about. In order for L'Hospital's rule to work, we need a couple of things to be true. First of all, we already said that L'Hospital's rule was replacing the original numerator with its derivative and replacing the original denominator with its derivative. So obviously, once we've applied L'Hospital's rule, we're going to end up with f prime of x over g prime of x. Well, a couple things to say here. If an application of L'Hospital's rule is going to work, then g prime of a can't be zero. And of course that makes sense because we're taking the limit as x approaches a. So when we evaluate at x equals a, in the denominator after the L'Hospital's rule application, we're going to end up with g prime of a. And if g prime of a is zero, then our denominator is zero and of course the function is then undefined. So all we're saying here is that if we apply L'Hospital's rule and then we evaluate at the value of the limit as x goes to a, and our denominator is still zero, obviously we're going to have a problem that function is undefined. So L'Hospital's rule isn't going to work in that case. Another scenario we run into where L'Hospital's rule doesn't work is when the function's value oscillates as x approaches a rather than approaching a particular number. This will happen a lot with trigonometric functions, which are periodic, especially as x approaches positive or negative infinity. In other words, if the function just waves up and down back and forth as you approach the number you're interested in as x approaches a, that means it's oscillating as x goes to a, and L'Hospital's rule isn't going to work in that case either. And finally, another way that the limit won't exist is if you find that the limit is equal to infinity. This might be a little confusing, but if you think about what a limit is, you realize that saying the limit is infinity is just another way of saying the limit doesn't exist. So if the limit as x approaches a is either positive infinity or negative infinity, L'Hospital's rule won't work. What we can say, though, is that if all three of these conditions are met, if g prime of a does not equal zero, if there's no oscillation in the function as x approaches a, and if the limit as x goes to a is not positive or negative infinity, then L'Hospital's rule is something we can use. If any of these conditions does apply to a problem and you aren't able to use L'Hospital's rule to determine the answer, don't panic. You still may be able to go back to some simpler methods of solving limits, and maybe manipulate the original function into something similar, avoiding L'Hospital's rule altogether. Let's take as an example the limit as x goes to 4 of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. So in this case, if we try substitution, we end up with 4 squared, or 16, minus 16 in the numerator, divided by 4 minus 4 in the denominator. Of course, we end up with 0 over 0, and that's an indeterminate form. So our first inclination might be, let's use L'Hospital's rule to simplify the original function and find the limit. But in this case, L'Hospital's rule actually isn't even necessary. In other words, just because you get an indeterminate form when you substitute doesn't mean you always have to jump right to L'Hospital's rule. In this case, we can actually factor the numerator and denominator. So the numerator, x squared minus 16, splits up as quantity x plus 4 times quantity x minus 4, and then, of course, we still have x minus 4 in the denominator. What we see, then, is that we can cancel the factors of x minus 4, leaving us with just x plus 4 in place of our original function. And now that we've simplified, if we go back to substitution and try it again, we just have x plus 4, we plug 4 in for x since we're taking the limit as x goes to 4, and we just get 4 plus 4, or 8. So the value of the limit is 8, and even though we had an indeterminate form, we didn't have to use L'Hospital's rule at all to find the value of the limit. If we take another example, we have the limit as x goes to infinity of 4x squared minus 5x divided by 1 minus 3x squared. This can be simplified simply by dividing both the numerator and denominator by x squared. Since we're performing the same operation to the numerator and denominator, we're not changing the value of the fraction, but after we distribute the 1 over x squared, across both the numerator and denominator, we end up with 4 minus 5x divided by 1 over x squared minus 3. Then we can easily evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity because 5 over x will become 0 
and 1 over x squared will become 0 when we take that limit as x goes to infinity. So we just have 4 minus 0 over 0 minus 3, which gives us a simple real number answer of negative 4 thirds as the value of the limit. Now that we've talked about a couple examples where you might be able to avoid using L'Hospital's rule, let's do one more example where we do use L'Hospital's rule to simplify our function. Remember, we need to make sure the limit of this quotient is an indeterminate form. So let's check. It looks like if we plug in 2 for x, we end up with 2 minus 2 divided by 2 to the 4th, which would be 16, so 16 minus 16. Of course, that's going to give us 0 over 0, and that's an indeterminate form, so immediately we're thinking we can use L'Hospital's rule. Remember, with L'Hospital's rule, we're looking at the numerator and the denominator individually. So our numerator is x minus 2. We'll call the numerator f of x, and we'll say f of x is equal to x minus 2. Our denominator is x to the 4th minus 16. We'll call that g of x, and we'll say g of x is equal to x to the 4th minus 16. Now remember, L'Hospital's rule tells us that we need to take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator individually. So we'll start with the numerator f of x. We need to find the derivative of x minus 2. Well, the derivative of x is simply 1, and the derivative of the negative 2 is 0. So essentially we'd have 1 plus 0, or just 1. So the derivative f prime of x is equal to 1. If we take g of x, our denominator, x to the 4th minus 16, and we find its derivative, we get 4x cubed. And then the derivative of negative 16 is 0, so our derivative g prime of x is just equal to 4x cubed. Now that we have both the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, we want to replace the original numerator and the original denominator with their derivatives. So instead of taking the limit as x goes to 2 of the original function, we'll take the limit as x goes to 2 of f prime of x over g prime of x, or 1 over 4x cubed. Now that we've applied L'Hospital's rule one time, we go back to substitution to see if, at this point, we're able to evaluate the limit using substitution, or if we'll need to apply L'Hospital's rule maybe a second or a third time. So when we substitute, we end up with 1 divided by 4 times 2 cubed. Well, 2 cubed is 8, so we get 1 over 4 times 8, or 1 over 32. So that's a real number answer, which means we can stop there and we can say the value of the limit as x goes to 2 of the original function is 1 over 32. And remember, if we had ended up with an indeterminate form here, we could have tried to apply L'Hospital's rule a second time or a third time as many times as we needed in order to get a real number answer. I hope that this helped a little bit to show you how helpful L'Hospital's rule really can be. It certainly isn't the only tool you should have in your belt when evaluating limits, but when you can use it and when all the conditions are met, it can really help you to evaluate a limit quickly and easily.